Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining for our CloudFresh webinar dedicated to Octa's identity access management and security solutions. Let me introduce our Octa expert and today's speaker, Julia, who is a certified professional in Octa Workforce Identity Cloud Solutions. She will cover and showcase the product's main features, as well as give us a broader perspective on today's digital security threats and how to prevent them. Before we jump to the main part, I would like to take a moment to introduce CloudFresh to you. CloudFresh is a global partner of Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Okta, and Microsoft. We are trusted by more than 1,400 customers from all over the world. Since 2017, we've been specializing in implementation, migration, integration, audit, administration, support, and training for the best-in-class cloud solutions. Our professional services for Okta include single sign-on implementation and training and Workforce Identity Cloud Lifecycle Setup Package, best fitted for companies looking to empower everyone inside and outside their organization to work easily and safely from any device and any place. We are proud to work with leaders in various industries. Over the years, companies such as Deloitte, BWS, SoftServe, Forbes, and many others have chosen CloudFresh for our cloud solutions. And here's something special for webinar attendees. We are offering a 10% discount for our, all Okta solutions that suit your business needs. By scanning the QR code, you can fill out the form and our expert team will get in touch and discuss your expectations. Uh, and one more exclusive thing for webinar participants, we are offering the special branded gifts for the person who asks the most interesting question or provides comment to the speaker. So don't hesitate, participate in the webinar chat or Q&A session, and you might be the one who Julia chooses at the end of the webinar. That's all from my side. Thank you, and I pass the stage to Julia. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all here. So let's talk about uh, cybersecurity and have fun uh, and talk about interesting cases in cyber cybersecurity. So firstly, we'll start about zero trust. So what exactly is a zero trust? Everyone talk about it, but sometimes it's just a word. So in today's world, it's hard to know who to trust when uh, it, we are talking about internet safety. We have learned from people like Edward Snowden that even big companies can be spied on. This shows that just because something is inside a secure place, it doesn't mean it's safe. So, for example, there have been attacks on important systems like an oil pipelines and nuclear power plants because their security was weak. This attack shows that once someone gets inside a system and can move around easily. To fix this, we need to use a zero trust approach. This means making our internet communication and access to secure that we don't have to worry about the physical safety of the network. With strong security methods we and the right technology, this is possible. Let's move to second slide, and here we will talk about um, traditional uh, security. So uh, you see in a slide that here we have trusted perimeters, and uh, all around is untrusted. Actually, uh, that method started to be um, old uh, because it divides ne networks into zones with different trust levels. Zero trust doesn't rely on the network's location to keep things safe. This helps avoid problems like uh, not checking traffic within zones, not being flexible with rare host place, and having single points where things can go wrong. By focusing on checking security at the edge of the network and using advanced technology, Zero Trust Affair offers a better and more flexible way to protect against mod modern cyber threats. Uh, so on that slide, actually, it's a really good example of an old security method. And it's really pain that a lot of modern companies using that method and sometimes have uh, huge problems so uh, let's talk about architect 
a special authorization architect. Uh, we uh, have actually key components of zero trust architect like enforcement, policy engines, trust engines, and data stores that work together to keep our systems safe. The enforcement point is where assess decisions are made, ensuring that only authorized users and devices can assess certain resources. The policy engine sets the rules based on the organization's security policies, while the trust engine verifies the identity and trustworthiness of users and devices. Lastly, data stores hold the information needed for authorization decision. Together, these elements form a robot architect that protects our network and data from unauthorized uh, access. On the next slide, I have a small example of how it works together. And we have to understand that in um, cybersecurity world, we don't have any, um, how to say, um, silver bullets, actually, because everything has to work together. And um, uh, when we grow our security and also hackers grow, their uh, possibilities to attack. So, yeah, so said. <laughs> uh, so let's say a user, uh, here it's N. Network. The enforcement point checks with the policy engine, which looks up the rules for assessing that file. The trust engine then verifies the user identity and checks if they have the right permissions. If everything checks out, the user is granted access. If not, access is denied. This process ensures that only authorized user can uh, assess sensitive information, keeping the network secure. Uh, so here it could be some uh, policy uh, for devices, uh, for example, for um, network uh, policies for um, identity. Uh, we will talk about uh, uh, that on next slides. Mm, sorry. Mm looks like have some issues Irina could you try to uh, change slide to next yeah sorry yeah of course so is is this the right one mm, no let's let's do it like this just let me know which slide do you need. It should be set. Mm, 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 it should. It's have to be twelve. Okay, so this one, right? Julia? No, now I have. Uh, Yes, uh, now I have 11 on my screen. Uh, so okay. there, there's, mm. we have 12, 12s. Interesting. Okay, so uh, here about uh, devices and identities, right? Uh, it's about trusting, and then we have... Uh, so, okay. Uh, Mm-hmm, nice. Nice, looks like I have some um, trouble, especially with my computer. Okay, in uh, network security, it's uh, important that everything work together. So uh, firstly, we'll talk about trusting devices, means only allowing safe devices to connect. Uh, second is um, most popular uh, trusting identities, means making sure only allowed people can use the system. 
Trusting application means only letting safe software run on the network. And trusting traffic means checking that all data moving through the network is okay and not harmful. By making sure all the spires are trusted, we create a strong defense against cyber threats, keeping our network safe. So, that means uh, we can create policies for all of that part of our security network. We can create policies, especially uh, for devices. Uh, for example, in our company, we have uh, uh, 50 devices and uh, we can create policies that only that device can access to our storage, for example. Also, same about identities and uh, same about network. So, I think uh, most of you just created the policy in your company, especially for admins and the user with uh, admins rules. So, let's try. Mm, it's interesting. Let's... Uh, I just uh, leave it and uh, reconnect because I just don't see any changing on presentation. Rina, give me one second. Yeah, yeah, please. sure, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry for this tech troubles. We will be back in one minute. Okay, Yulia is here. So, Julia, you should be able to move slides now. Can you please check? Uh, you are muted. So, if... Mm -hmm. I have sent you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, let uh, just write in chat um, about uh, most interesting cybersecurity attack what you know about, especially for you, or what you remember about. Hmm. You can just want to merge. Let's do that. No, anyone? Mm -hmm. And do someone remember about uh, Sony attack? <laughs> okay, star, yes, it is. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, let's talk about it. Uh, business needs to more with less, but attackers are just as ready as you are. And actually, it's uh, true. If you look at the attackers based street modeling methodology, we are able to categorize attackers into a list of increasing capabilities, order from list to more threatening. So firstly, it's an opportunistic attacker. So mostly it's um, called like script kiddies, uh, unexperienced hackers who take advantage of well-known security weakness without a specific target in mind. Uh, weakness. And um, so dangerous is targeted attackers, attackers who craft specialized attacks against a particular target. 
spear fishing and corporate uh, espionage might fall into that bucket actually and uh, mostly we'll talk about that attack and uh, interesting one it's an insider street uh, um, credential but uh, everyday user of a system it can be a uh, contractors and unprivileged employees um, so that's it and this one it's a trusted inside is a highly trusted administrator of a system and the more interesting it's a state level actor attackers be, uh, backed by foreign or domestic governments and assumed to have vast resources and uh, positioning capabilities to attack a target so now in some countries it's uh, really popular to have some um, attackers and uh, have budget for that especially north korea and uh, russia they have uh, a huge budget uh, to create it, uh, attacks to other governments or private company so uh it's uh works like that Actually, uh, why I'm talking about that, because uh, categorizing uh, threats uh, like this is a useful uh, exercise to focus uh, discussion around a particular level of um, uh, mitigate against. Uh, so we uh, like, can have to know uh, from what we should defend. Uh, so... Mm, it's interesting that I have the trouble with presentation. Okay, and um, just um, everyone knows is um, our digital world, we need to be careful about targeted uh, cyber attack that I said before. This attacks uh, the time to steal important information or cause problem for specific people or companies it's very important for everyone from regular people or big business to be alert and use good security to keep safe from the threats so by being aware and taking action we can protect ourselves and our digital information from these attacks so and here we will talk uh, a little bit about uh, famous attack on sony and let's check um, yeah and about uh, k star we already can um, i think know uh, everyone uh, know about it in ukraine um k star is a big uh, telecommunication company uh who um have huge amount of customer and uh, it uh, had been attacked uh, by Russia and uh, they uh, just was offline like in a few hours I don't remember exactly uh, and um, it was huge damage for that company and here we uh, can categorize it into a state level actors actually so and uh, for me it's just my more interesting uh, attacks for sony i uh, talk already so it uh, happened in 2014 um uh, so sony uh was hacked and it was soft damage cyber attack. The attackers who call themselves guardian of peace gain access to Sony network and stole a vast amount of data, including personal information, uh, embracing emails, unreleased movies, for example. So that financial damage um, for the company approximately was like $15 million. It's really huge attack and uh, based on that we have to understand that investing in security is so important uh, and uh, after investigation just yes government response uh, that um, 
attribute the attack to North Korea and impose sanctions to the country in response. So by Sony, they just lost several unreleased uh, movies, for example. It was an Annie Fury and the interview and company lost a lot of money because they just used um, old uh, method of security and have uh, a safe perimeter. And when attackers just receive uh, and parameters and uh, uh, they just can walk around and stall on information, whatever they need. So here we have to understand how important to use in can MVA, how we're using um, two-step verification and etc. And that slide, ladies and gentlemen, I really want to talk about um, so important information. It's shockingly because 89 of cyber attack happens because someone's login details like usernames and passwords were stolen or misused. That means that most of the time hackers get into a system because they have the right passwords. 89%. Could you imagine it? It's a stark reminder that our usernames and passwords are the key to our digital kingdom and we must guard them with the utmost uh, vigilance by implementing strong password policies using multi-factor and regularly monitoring for suspicious activities. Uh, we can reduce the risk of falling victims of that attacks. Let's uh, just prioritize our uh, protectioning, our credentials, and keep our data and system secure. Uh, so, let's start talking a little bit about identity. Uh, so, it's quite important key, keeping our online information safe, especially our identity. Our identity is not just small things to check off a list. It is the base of our digital security. Here, Okta and identity and assess management system plays actually a big role. Okta helps businesses make sure that the right people can get into the right part of their online system safely. It makes things more secure and easily to use. So uh, let's remember that our identity is the foundation of our online security. And using tools like Okta can help us keep everything secure and running smoothly. So, and by integration Okta in your system, you are not only enhancing your current security and efficiency, but also preparing your organization for the challenges and opportunities of tomorrow. Embrace Okta as the cornerstone of your digital strategy and unlock the full potential of your cloud identity today and in the future. Uh, because uh, using the uh, third-party services like Okta, we just put uh, all uh, work on uh, that company and you haven't to, to check like an all new in cybersecurity world every day, because like I said before, when we grow our security, hackers just grow their possibilities. And let's talk a little bit more detail in um, of um, Okta possibilities. Uh, so here we have some information how the uh, Okta dashboards look. And here we can create um, like a huge amount of uh, policies. And on the next slide, I just show you an example how it looks. And uh, actually using the Okta, it's not just SSO because uh, in our practice, we had a uh, customer who really thinks that Okta just an SSO and just asking, 
why you uh, propose Okta, not in Google, Microsoft, SSO, etc. Okay, it depends you need. Uh, you can use all SSO services, but using Okta, you have uh, like an uh, all function of security, uh, not just SSO. So it's an identity and also it's a uh, policy engine and trust engine. And also Okta working is database like an um, Active Directory, hold up, and some legacy system. And it's really important because a lot of company using some um, backend uh, legacy code and systems. So for, um, you can uh, just integrate the system with Okta. And uh, using Okta is uh, pretty simple, especially in an online cabinet, because uh, here you can see we have just logical operation uh, if and uh, and then next so here we can create a logical rule so if our user type uh, something and user group and user um, name or user or device uh, so we can put the rule all data what we, what we need so here we can cover a few steps of authorization we can choose any mpa we can choose any uh, trusted devices we can choose trusted identities and also we can choose a tra trusted network so using an octa we can just uh, choose a trusted network especially on uh, ip in our office or some uh, local network etc so it's working like that and uh, actually if you don't like using can um, uh, visual cabinet you can use okta api uh, to connect to your hr system for example it's also working like that so using okta you can use not just a SSO but full life circle life circle management sorry uh, so uh, next slide, it's like talk about and MPA is no longer enough. Uh, because we have a lot of um, problem when uh, hackers just, um, uh, for example, stole an email uh, where to factor um, authentication, just uh, send a code, etc., uh, etc. Et so using Okta, we can add a lot possible MFA. Actually, we can put few of them and just for choosing. So uh, here you can manage various MFA methods and incorporate item into your security rules and policies. So uh, using an Okta cabinet, we can uh, create a policy using a Google Authenticator, uh, especially Okta application Authenticator, whatever we need. It can be uh, SMS, it can be call, it can be a mail. So here uh, we just can create our own policy using an ready to use uh, Okta application. Okay, and uh, really important one, it's a break free from the uh, chaos. It means uh, that Okta can help manage our uh, uh, onboarding and offboarding process. So using Okta, we can automate our onboarding. For example, when we just hired some, uh, let's talk, uh, accountant so uh, firstly you hr just uh, put all information about that person in their hr system uh, then uh, in a field like a title we have an accountant and then we can automate uh, to uh, put that uh, people to octa uh, account and create and profile uh, also we are uh, automatic uh adding uh, the group for spe uh, for example it's accountant and here just automatic we can add uh, all access to all application that that group uh just set it up 
So uh, here we just um, simplify the onboarding because uh, admins uh, spend a lot of time just creating accounts, just uh, change a password, just so uh, uh, set up all information. Using Okta, we can uh, create in so easy and fast. And the second pain of uh, huge businesses uh, that a lot of companies just buying a subscription of some services or application and then uh, just um, don't use it. So using Okta, we just can create an um, reports uh, about usability of uh, services and also about activity of users and also we can create policy based, based on it. So, for example, we can create a rules uh, that um, talk that um, user who uh, don't uh, uh, authorized for three days, for example, we can automatically automatically suspend him. Uh, or, for example, when uh, some application just don't uh, haven't used for week or two week we also can uh, create a notification and then just uh, uh, check an information with our ceo or marketing and uh, just make decision uh, do we need that application or maybe we don't have to pay for unused services so it's in working like that and actually it just a uh, million of dollars just spent for uh, subscriptions that businesses just mm, doesn't use and it's quite a big problem and we can um, just find solution with Okta and uh, also here an example of uh, policies we can create with Okta and dashboard how it working especially when we have some um, unexpected behavior from uh, our users we can create an uh, reports or notification and also we can create and rules that will work automatically uh, for example when users started uh, uh, um, uh, for example, when we have rules to work in only from our local network and user using different network, uh, we uh, just uh, forbidden access uh, to systems. And actually, it's a, a huge plus of Okta that we can work with all application. It's not just uh, some Okta profile or uh, some special application. For example, Auto have like an, uh, more than 7,000 ready to use integration with a lot of uh, application, but it doesn't mean that we uh, can work in with only that 7,000 application. No. Uh, we can uh, configure an Okta account and uh, different application using SAML, for example, and other protocols. And especially we can use our uh, uh, on-premise application or uh, our own application. And also it's possible to use a um, legacy code too. Uh, okay. Okay, and uh, let's talk about uh, pluses of using an Okta. So here uh, we can provide and enable millions of people to secure or connect to the tools they need. What does it mean that uh, using an Okta, we can create automatically uh, all our infrastructure and uh, create an account, uh, spend an account, and etc. Uh, so, using a, a talk that we can scale uh, to meet the needs of any size organization. So, uh, it means uh, that uh, we paying only for a uh, user and uh, you will pay uh, especially uh, of users of your organization. If you have uh, 10 uh, users, you will pay for that. If you have 1,000, you will pay for that. So it doesn't mean that small companies can't use Okta. And the loves companies to remind themselves and their industries and enable organization to focus on top-line business priorities. 
it means that you haven't to develop your own uh, uh, policy module and your own application uh, for security uh, using Okta, you will have everything in one place already ready to use. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and uh, let's uh, talk a little bit what um, Okta can cover. So it can cover a uh, B2C business. Uh, so Okta have um, authorization model for B2C that provide uh, possibility to create accounts for user for uh, modify accounts and suspend and delete that accounts. For example, if you're just building uh, or develop uh, your own application, you um, like don't have to create an authorization model. You can just uh, use a framework from Okta and uh, cre create an uh, accounts and authorize um, policy using an Okta. Uh, second, it's an uh, workforce. Uh, it's our actually our main product. Uh, it's what I told you about. Uh, so here we can uh, just optimize uh, working with uh, our onboarding of boarding process, management uh, people, managing assess, managing identity, managing policy and rules. And uh, next one is B2B and it's about partner. For example, we can connect just two Okta. Um, uh, we can create just to opt account, for example, you have a uh, partner who provides for you some services. And uh, they need just access to a few application what you used and a special access level. Uh, so here you can just um, um, create um, uh, like a bridge with two Octus account and provide an access to special users of that second company. So it can work like that. And it's really pretty easy and interesting. And the next one, it's an application like in cloud or on-premise application, uh, mostly big uh, developing company using it. It can be also infrastructure. Uh, also, it can be uh, some OS or on-premise, and it can be uh, API. Uh, for example, if you're developing some uh, API, you can uh, just secure your endpoints using can Okta. It also will work fine. Uh, and uh, a little bit about um, uh, Okta products. So actually, Okta working like a constructor. So here you have a huge amount of um, uh, services like an SSO, uh, like a lifecycle, like a uh, managing policy, etc. And, and we can uh, just um, find that. Um, services in uh, packages like an SSO, universal directory, uh, adaptive multi-factor, and lifecycle management. Uh, mostly for big companies or middle-sized companies, most uh, interesting is lifecycle management because here we can uh, just uh, manage our user on every uh, step. For example, when you just hired a manager on junior position and uh, provide an assess for um, application uh, depends on that level. And then after a few months of work and you understand and just um, change position, position to middle, you can just uh, change a group for that user and it automatically will provide a, a uh, more high assess uh, level depends of your uh, policy for that group. Uh, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, okay, and uh, here I really love that slide because uh, uh, here we can uh, see the uh, challenges and uh, product of Okta which can cover that challenges. Uh, so. Uh, here it's challenge about uh, manual uh, password process and um, 
more password trails. So using a single SSO, we can uh, optimize the process that user will uh, uh, reset their password automatically using an Okta profile. So uh, here we just uh, decrease uh, um, using time of our admins and save a huge amount of money. Uh, second one, it's an uh, MPA. Uh, using uh, MPA, we can cover a lot of um, problems, uh, especially phishing attacks. Uh, so I provided you slide about huge uh, amount of uh, MVA Okta provide and um, for sure we can use it here. And then uh, lifecycle management, it's about onboarding and offboarding and uh, some orphan accounts uh, with exposed data. So using life management, we can suspend that account automatically. Uh, next uh, is identity driven security. So for using Okta is quite easily implementing zero trust uh, methodology. And um, if we uh, have to enable access to contractors and partners or external access, uh, we can use an universal directory with Okta and also on that level we can use some LDAP services or some on-premise database. It's also possible using this Okta. And the uh, last one is unified identity. Uh, it's about supporting hybrid IT infrastructure and uh, legacy code. It's easy working with Okta. Uh, and about the um, situation on market, so uh, here are some Okta investigation and here we have information that Okta for now the world's first identity platform. So that's it and it's because uh, um, Okta solved complexity and have a lot of uh, possibilities it's not just a source so and it's not just about mfa it's about all levels of security uh okay and next one God, it's again the problem with presentation. Okay, about uh, so do they oh, have we ready to do the Q and A session? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for insightful speech. Then um, I'll just uh, like to launch the Q and A session. And um, I had uh, we had like a couple of questions during your speech. So let me uh, let me just um, read the first one. Um, so it's one. It, it was from uh, Frantishek. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will concise it a little bit. How do we address backdoors and hidden processes in apps and hardware, given the challenges of big data solutions and the fact that much of hardware uh, originate from China? Does this limit our ability to sorrowfully tackle security issues? And uh, are there effective strategies we can employ despite these limitations? So it's just a question about your opinion on this. Um. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, uh, it's true, but uh, actually, um, we don't have here some uh, silver bullet actually, uh, but uh, we can just implement zero trust uh, using that application. Uh, for example, we can create a policy for some application to uh, allow. Uh, assess only just some uh, data uh, that doesn't have any risk for example so it's about a uh, trusting uh, application in that case uh, it's better to uh, uh, create a uh, 
policy uh, about trusting and about uh, um, accessing. Uh, and uh, also uh, creating a uh, policy for identities. Uh, so uh, using that, and especially if you're working in some uh, government company uh, or uh, you have a uh, huge risk, it's better just doesn't use an application that uh, you can't uh, believe uh, some like you uh, provide information in your uh, questions. Uh, yes, uh, Irina, can you un unmute? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think French can uh, unmute himself, so you can go on. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, yeah, uh, about the zero trust policy, I think it has a. Uh, a lot of connotations in those corporations who are ba basically using it from what i see and from which uh, whatever entities i speak with it's usually a problem because it creates this uh, a real zero trust uh, policy between those companies and it's really hard to establish it on the biological level you know so i would call it a little bit differently that's just something which comes from the practical use of the terms and even one word can change a lot of people's uh, opinions about stuff for example uh, google will not trust uh, microsoft or microsoft will not trust uh, slack or whatever of these applications because they have own packs of solutions in ai and cybersecurity and stuff around and i would be just a little bit more, um, how would you say, I would use completely different terms when I would be speaking about verifying uh, who's using it, because negative terms and negative, uh, you know, uh, negative communication creates only more negative communication. So basically people are using simple abbreviations to think about stuff and then you have thousands of people in corporations who don't even know what that means and they will uh they will not be sure about trusting anyone uh, that's basically what we have it's it's a global trust fall and if we use uh, terms or communications which are based on these negative uh, words we will basically build something which is not working internationally that's what i don't want in communications or in information to see you know uh problems between East and West and the things of translation, especially speaking with the Chinese who don't uh, speak as well in English, they have problems to even understand what we mean. They don't understand the US people. US people don't understand what Chinese means. And I just would be very, 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 very careful about the words which I'm choosing in the hybrid war, which we are all experiencing. That's all, just what I wanted to say because it's not a problem of one solution, it's a problem of the whole platform. And if you have a computer assembled in China and you have uh, software in US and uh, you have AI, which is uh, generative and listens to your communications and then makes decisions about your hardware and how it behaves, you will have more problems because of that. That's what I want to say. It's really sensitive. It's really, uh, I think we all know that it's, it's super sensitive to uh, people and their uh, communications interactions. Uh, yep, for sure, but... Yeah, so basically I just w wanted to say that uh, we can't be solving all the problems, we don't have silver bullets, but at the same time, if we are building any architecture of solutions or we are creating new processes, we should be always, you know, uh, Thinking about global, you know, that means like this is not, uh, this is not. Uh, uh, yeah, it's true, but we're talking about. War. This is environment of, uh, of solutions. A little right? bit uh, different. Uh, we're talking about especially workforce uh, identity. No, I, well, I mean, I mean, in, I mean, in general, like if uh, you if you use it, quite, uh, if you use it, and, and my and my, uh, for example, my, my phone about, uses predictive uh, AI and a sensitive in AI. So how is it gonna look? It's gonna look like we are building zero trust towards everything they do. So I think people need to be in IT for a long time to make decisions about 
to call anything uh, zero trust. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but we don't uh, talking about uh, personal trust issue. It's about business. Uh, so here of we course, can of course, of course, but I know a lot of people here. I know a lot of people globally, and I know exactly how they behave. And I know the technology bottlenecks and hiccups and stops stop tickets because of uh, certain words or behavior or just listening to several videos for people who are working on global scale and doing international business. So yeah, I'm just giving you the practical, practical, uh, what you call it, feedback from uh, what can happen if we if we use terms which are not uh, positive. But yeah, it's not just like this. It's more about uh, it's more about the company culture, of course. But uh, I think people forget a lot that this is not uh, one solution uh, environment. It's always a global solution environment and forest, and we should be behaving like that every day when we are building solutions and naming them. And millions of people will use those words, and it creates of course, that uh, emotional response, which is typical for generative AI. Yeah, yeah, Frantishek, absolutely agree. Uh, there are many challenges that um, yeah, we should consider, and uh, there are lots of uh, challenges to tackle in the future. Uh, so thanks for your opinion. Um, and let's move to the second uh, so, question. Uh, so that, uh, that was about uh, a, a single sign-on pricing. Uh, okay, uh, so for, uh, we, uh, Okta pricing just for one account, uh, so for, for, um, per user, uh, you will pay, uh, two dollars, uh, for simple SSO and, uh, five dollars for adaptive SSO. Uh, so it's working like that, and also uh, we uh, have possibility to uh, have personalized prices for big companies uh, based on uh, like a large amount of uh, users. And about um, uh, policy. uh so we are talking about business and depends on sony example for example and uh, a lot of uh, different cyber attacks uh, so it's uh, quite important it's it's about money you can uh, create and trust atmosphere in your company with your hr but uh, when we're talking about our data and our um, system it uh, has to be uh safe and uh, using zero trust policy in that world it's um, for now it's the best one so okay next question uh okay uh can you clarify the main difference between okta and uh, oh, yeah, sorry i was muted uh, so yeah it was mm -hmm. uh, about Okta and Auxir. If it's possible to provide examples, what solution works better and which cases? Uh, yeah, but uh, it's uh, not about works better, something like that, because it's absolutely different solution. Uh, actually, Okta just bought an uh, Auxir. Uh, for now, it's company uh, owned by Okta. And um, like an Okta solution mostly using for workforce and uh, B2B business. Uh, so here it's about uh, life cycle. It's about an, uh, management of your uh, users in your company. Uh, it's about, like I said, onboarding process, offboarding. It's about uh, giving uh, assess. It's about uh, security policies. And uh, so it's... Uh, uh, like an inside uh, uh, 
mm, 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 like an inside uh, solution uh, for your company and uh, for managing uh, especially uh, users uh, who have access to some sensitive information in your company it's like in your co-workers it's like in your partners etc so it's mostly uh, workforce and uh, b2b uh, if you're talking about our zero it's uh, mostly about uh, b2c business so uh, like uh, i said uh, before in that example about octa services for different areas so it's in b2c when you building your own uh, application and uh, here uh you just uh, don't have uh, time and money and uh, developers to create uh and security authorization model uh so here you just can uh, implement uh octa frame and uh, make the all authentication um, process on octa site uh, for example you're selling some um uh clauses for example and uh, you want to create an uh, user accounts uh, for uh, have some uh, discounts based based on uh, their spending on your site but you don't have possibility to create that all model on uh, your site uh, so here you just can uh, use an octa for that and just implement an octa profile and then you will manage all that b2c profiles on octa site not in your uh, backend but in octa so it works like that and it's really different um, a solution for different uh, part of business i hope i uh, explain understandable uh duh. yes thanks um uh, we have two more uh the the next one is does okta propose only cloud solution or is it possible to set up your product on the customer's hardware as well uh okta propose both of them so here you can uh, work uh, on cloud solution like in uh, google rs or azure etc and also it's possible to uh, work with your hardware your open uh, database uh, or your own computers etc and also it's uh, possible to implement okta to legacy uh, application uh, for example it also works like that uh, so here it just works like a constructor and you can uh, use it whatever you want and uh, actually um I just forgot what i want to say um uh yeah and sometimes uh if you don't have some protocols uh, in uh, your legacy application uh we can uh, just using some agent to connect to octa so it's pretty easy mm -hmm. Thank you. And the last one uh, is um, is from Oluxi, and it's about competitive advantages of Okta, for example, in comparison to Microsoft AAD. Uh, for sure. Uh, it's pretty easy uh, because in uh, Microsoft, they don't have um, uh, a huge amount of uh, services like Okta. So uh, they just competitor in uh, one or two uh, piece of service, but using in Okta, you can over all your needs. Thanks so much. Um, so we covered all the questions from the chat and, um, and voice. Um, and as promised, you will now choose a winner from whom we will send our branded gift. So go on. Oh, I love it. Uh, so uh, we will uh, provide all gifts to one person or just uh, have yeah, yeah we, we, we have uh, one winner and uh, it's a branded kit um, so yeah it will be sent to one person okay uh, let's um mm -hmm, between Octum. Okay, uh, I choose Alexander Shepetko. I think uh, he uh, just asked two questions. It was pretty good. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, Alexander, I will contact you via email or phone um, and um, I get your details to send those gifts. Uh, thank you for your question. 
Um, and thank all of you for your time today. I hope the webinar was everything that you expected. Um, and I would like to remind about our special offer uh, for webinar attendees to claim 10% of Okta solutions. Simply scan the QR code and fill out the form uh, and our team will be in touch after the webinar. Uh, once again, thank you for joining. It's been our pleasure. The webinar recording and presentation will be sent to you soon. And if you have any questions regarding Okta or any other cloud solutions, feel free to reach out to us via the website or at hi at cloudfresh.com. Have a nice day, all of you. Bye. Have a nice day and be safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank Thanks. you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.